Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, uh, a video in a new series of videos uh, dealing with propositional logic, uh, is an introduction to propositional logic. But more importantly, it's an introduction to a small number of really, really important connectives that are associated with, with propositional logic. In particular, the not connective, uh, symbolized by an exclamation mark, uh, the or connective symbolized by a V, uh, the AND connective symbolized by the hat symbol, and the implication uh, connective that's symbolized by an equals followed by a greater than sign, or if you want to call it an equals followed by a right chevron. Okay, uh, but first of all, just maybe just to just to set the scene, yeah, and that sort of define some of the the main components of propositional logic. Uh, propositional logic deals with what's known as propositional statements. Okay, so the main the main I suppose let's say components, yeah. Okay, so the main the main components, okay, of let's call it PL, propositional logic, the main components of PL, okay, are propositional, propositional uh, statements, okay, and also connectives that connect these statements together, okay, and I'll just say and connectives, okay, uh, and by a propositional statement we mean a statement, so a propositional a propositional statement statement uh, is a statement that at any particular moment in time so it sort of has this sort of temporal uh, thing associated with so it's any statement in English let's say okay, or any statement in your language it's a statement that's either that's either true or false okay so any propositional statement that's either true or false and we usually symbolize we symbolize, okay, we symbolize uh, these statements, these statements, uh, by, I suppose, variables, yeah, that looks something like this. The variables are usually P, Q, or S, and T, and so on. So it's the latter end of the, of, of the alpha, uh, of the, of the alphabet, okay? But the most important thing is a proposition is a, st a propositional statement, uh, and propositional logic deals with propositional statements, statements that are either true or false. For example, it is raining, okay? So some examples, some examples, okay? Uh, some simple examples, it, it is raining, now, if you look outside the door now, okay, that statement is either true or false. It is raining or it's not raining, yeah, okay? Uh, has an umbrella, okay? Has an umbrella. Well, if you look at that person or yourself, have you got an umbrella? That's either true or false, okay? So there are statements in, the, in our language, yeah, that are either true or false, okay? Now, with that said, there is other there are other statements that can be created that are composed of these particular these particular propositions. For example, in English I could say it is raining and I have an umbrella. That's a statement, a propositional statement that's either true or false, okay? It's made up of two two let's say atomic statements, the first one being it is raining and that's connected together with the connective and uh, which then is followed by has an umbrella. So it is raining and has an umbrella. There are two statements connected together, okay, uh, using an and, okay, in this case, as an example. But let's just consider these two particular values here, true and false. Okay. Now, we're not going to get into, I suppose, let's say, uh, philosophy and things like that in relation to what does true truly mean or what does false mean, okay? But these can actually be considered to be, I suppose, propositions as well, okay? Because they have a particular value. True is true. False is false, okay? So actually, these are also propositions, yeah? And true is usually symbolized, true is usually symbolized by a T and false is usually symbolized false is usually symbolized by by an F okay but how do these how do these particular connectives work is the, is the real I suppose goal of this particular this particular discussion here today okay uh, 
Well, we have these four connectives. Uh, they have a particular structure, okay? They have a syntax associated with them, okay? The not, uh, the not connective, yeah, okay, or the not operator is what's known as a unary operator, okay? It's a unary operator. It operates on a single proposition, okay? The or operator is what's known as a binary operator. It operates on two propositions. For example, it is raining or I have an umbrella, okay? Two propositions. The and is also a binary binary operator. Uh, it is raining and I have an umbrella. And the implication is also binary. Okay? It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, well, it's not really that complicated, okay? but we'll, we'll, we'll get used to it later. Okay? The implication is something like, if it is raining, then I have an umbrella. So it's binary. It takes two propositions. Okay? So how do these propositions work? Oh, sorry, how do these connectives work when we apply them to particular propositions? And the way we're going to try to understand them is through what's known as a truth table. And a truth table, I suppose, it's just a table. Okay? It's a table. It looks something like this. It has, I suppose, uh, it has two columns. Okay? It has a, a bar that goes down the centre here. Okay? Uh, it has a left-hand part and it has a right-hand part. Okay? Now, usually what's listed on the left-hand part is the propositions that the operator is going to be applied to. So, in relation to the unary operator not, it acts on a single proposition. So, let's call this proposition P. Now, what we list down under this particular proposition is all the truth values that it can actually take on at any particular moment in time. So, a proposition P could be any proposition. It could be it is raining, I have an umbrella. It could be anything at all, okay, but it has to be a proposition. Some proposition P can either be false or it can be true. Okay? They're the possible states that the proposition P could be in at any moment in time. It can't be both. It can only be one. That's part of the definition of a proposition. And the not operator, okay, the not p, okay, well, the result of a not p, that's how we read this, not p, or the negation of p, is dependent on the state that the original proposition is in. So, for example, if the original proposition p is actually false, okay, well, then not p must be true, okay. If the original proposition is true, well, then not p must be true false okay so this is the way that this particular operator this exclamation mark that's a symbol for it okay but this particular concept as a, as an inver a, a negation or a not this is the way it works the output of a not on a proposition is dependent on the input okay so if the proposition is false its negation is true if the proposition is true its negation is false okay so how does the binary operator or work? Okay. Uh, well, once again, we'll we'll define how it works through a truth table. Okay, something like this. Don't forget the binary uh, or takes two propositions. Let's symbolize them by p, and let's use a q to symbolize the second proposition. The p we say is the left operand. The q is the right operand. Okay. Now, what will the output look like? Well, actually, let's define all the possible states that p along with Q, can be in simultaneously. Well, I suppose both could be initially false. The first one could be false, and the second one true. The first one could be true, and the second one false. And then the next possibility, the only other possibility, is that the first one is true, and the second one is true. So the OR is an operation that's applied to two propositions. So from a syntax perspective, when we OR P, and Q, P with Q, the output is P with Q. And the way it works is like this. Okay? Actually, let me give you a little bit of a rhyme. Okay? An OR is only ever false when both are false. Okay? So the OR is only ever false when both inputs are simultaneously false. Okay? And let's think about that here for a moment. Yeah? So say if you say to your mother okay, or your friend yeah, that you're going to watch the football match or you're going swimming. Okay? Uh, and let's say you don't go and watch the football match, so that proposition is false. You don't go swimming, okay? Well then, if you think about it, you've told a lie to your friend, so actually P or Q is false, okay? When you say that you're, if you say to your friend that you're going to watch the football, or you're going swimming, if you don't go to football, but you do go swimming, okay? Well, you haven't lied to your friend, and you know that naturally works, okay? So you haven't lied, so it must be true. If you say to your friend you're going to watch the football or you're going swimming, and if you do go to watch the football, 
you don't go swimming once again you haven't lied to your friend so it's not false it must be true now this last one is a little bit unusual what we're actually defining here is what's known as the inclusive or in the real world when we say that I'm doing A or B I sort of mean I'm doing one or the other I'm not doing both yeah but in air situation here for for air propositional logic that we're building yeah okay at this stage we're defining what's known as the inclusive or so irrespective of whether I do either okay it's true okay so actually what I said earlier on the rhyme is this is that an or of two propositions now here CP is on the left so it's the left operand Q is on the right so it's the right operand the or of two propositions is only ever false okay it's only ever false that's right here okay it's only ever false when both of the operands are simultaneously false okay. now an and operation okay an and the and connective once again we'll define it using a truth table okay uh, it takes two propositions a p a q the states that they could be in are false 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 true true false true true okay and the and p and q okay well like if you say to your say to your mother or to your friend i'm going to watch the football and i'm going swimming okay in no no particular order you're, you're you're giving it there but you're going to watch the football and you're going swimming for you not to have told a lie you must have done both things okay so when when i do go to watch the football i do go swimming i haven't told a lie i said i was doing both i was doing i was going to watch the football and i was going swimming okay well then the output is true the all other times for an and the output is false because we have told a lie somewhere okay if that makes sense okay so let's just recap back to the or an or is only ever false when both of the inputs are simultaneously false whereas an and is only ever true when both of the inputs are simultaneously true and that's the way we can construct these true tables okay now the implication is a little bit more tricky to understand okay now i'll try to try to explain this with an example okay so once again it takes two propositions p q uh, they could be false 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 true true false true true and p implies q p implies q as a proposition that has a truth value okay is dependent on the value of the left operand and also the, the value of the right operand actually the left operand we call the premise so the premise implies the right operand we call a conclusion okay so the premise implies a conclusion okay so this is like an argument here okay and the rule if I on a rule is that an implication is only ever false when the premise is true and the conclusion is false okay so the only time it's ever false I'll just fill it in and then we'll try to ration rationalize what's going on okay so the only time it's ever false is when the premise is true that's here and the conclusion is false so the only time it's false is here everywhere else it's true and let's give an example okay now obviously I'm a little bit of a football uh, fan let's say if United that's Man United yeah if United win then I'll buy you a pint I buy you a pint I buy you a pint and obviously I'm Irish as well okay but now the key thing here about this type of statement this is an implication okay or it's a statement that has has different constructs that has two propositions that are connected together to this if and the then okay what's between the if and the then is known as the premise okay so this is my premise Okay. and what's after the then is known as my conclusion to the argument okay so it's the conclusion and let's just use this as an example okay so United win Man United win that's either true or false I buy you a point that's either true or false so let's see let's see what's going on so let's take the easy one here true true okay so let's look at the proposition United win that's true let's assume it to be true and let's say I buy you a point that's true and what I'm saying here is this is that if United do win in other words if United win is true and then I buy you a pint or then I buy you a pint is true so United have won I did buy you a pint well then I haven't told you any lies so the output must be true okay. let's look at the other scenario the other easy one true false so United do win 
I don't buy it a pint. Now don't forget, I've said if United win, then I buy it a pint. United did win, I didn't buy it a pint. True, false. Okay, well then I've told you a lie, so that's false. Okay. Uh, let's see the next easy one, false, false. Okay. So United didn't win, I didn't buy it a pint. Okay. So I said if United win, then I buy it a pint. So United didn't win. I didn't buy it a pint, and you know in the real world that there's no expectation on me now. You're not going to come come to me after we after I say to you if United wins, then I buy it a pint. If United didn't win, and I didn't buy it a pint, okay, you're not going to come to me uh, saying you never bought me a pint. So actually, if it's not false, it must be true. So in this situation here, the false false, okay, and these two are false, okay. I haven't told a lie. I never bought United didn't win. I didn't buy it a pint, so it must be true, okay. Now the next one is a little bit unusual here, this false true. Okay. So United didn't win, I did buy it a pint, so it's false true. Hmm, is that true or false? Now I have it down here to be true, but let's rationale behind, let's, let's, let's try to rationalise what's going on. We're in the pub, I said to you, if United win, then I'll buy it a pint. So United didn't win. Now, I know there's no expectation on me to buy a pint, because I said if United wins, then I'll buy a pint, yeah? Okay. But it doesn't preclude me from buying you a pint at some other stage, yeah? Okay. And that's what's going on here, okay? So, false true, okay? United didn't win, it just happened I bought you a pint, okay? Well, I still haven't told any liars, yeah? So I haven't told any liars, so it must be true. Now, I do accept that the implication is a little bit tricky to try to get your head around, okay? But the way I like to understand these is like this, yeah? Okay? I think the, the invert or, or the negation, they're not straightforward enough. You just flip the state of the current, the current state of the proposition. If it's false, it goes to true. If it's true, it goes to false. We're in an or. An or is only ever false when both of the inputs are simultaneously false, okay? An and is another easy one to understand. An and is only ever true when both of the inputs are simultaneously true. And an implication, an implication is only ever false when the premise is true and the conclusion is false. Okay. Now guys, I can't stress how important it is, yeah, to become familiar with how these particular operators work, okay? Especially these four operators, albeit we can construct your, or some of these operators from other operators, okay? At this stage of our introduction to propositional logic, okay, well, I can't stress how important it is to become familiar with how these operators work, okay? And more importantly, to become familiar with our actual truth tables, because this will help us later on when it comes to evaluating propositional statements, uh, showing the equivalence of propositional statements, building truth tables for more complex propositional statements, and so on and so forth. Okay. So guys, this introduction to propositional logic, and more importantly to the four connectives, the four important connectives associated with propositional logic, okay, uh, and also our definition of what, what a proposition, propositional statement is, it's a statement that's either true or false, and also the values true and false are also defined to be propositions, okay, so propositions are the values true and false, and also statements in our language that can either be true or false and can't take on any other value. Okay. So I hope this video, okay, dealing with an introduction to prop proposition logic, I hope this uh, video uh, was some way helpful. So once again guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Okay. So uh, thank you guys.